So within the Star Trek universe, there is a mirror universe. Now a lot of Star Trek fans will automatically tell you that this is some of the coolest stuff that exists in Star Trek. Unfortunately, the next generation was never treated to any mirror episodes. So quickly, just to catch up new readers, essentially this place is way off from what you might know about Star Trek. Instead of having a united federation of planets, there is literally an empire. Former enemies have become allies and strong allies have become bad enemies. And as we open up into this comic, we see a buff Picard. Clearly he's been working out and he is in charge of the ISS Stargazer. And we see that they are not in the best shape. As the counselor shows up to talk to Jean-Luc Picard, we see that he wants a status update on how the crew is doing. And everything is as you think it would be in this messed up world. There is a whole bunch of mistrust. Nobody is willing to trust anybody else. And there are even rumors of a secret ship being built that Picard quickly dismisses saying, listen, if this existed, I would know of its existence. Upon arriving at the bridge, we more or less see that they salute each other like the Nazis have won World War II. As he arrives, he wants a status update, and Data is quick to tell him that there is a Cardassian ship that is just within scanner range, and something seems to be wrong with it, as it tends to be falling apart and something has happened with its warp core. Now, Picard does think this could be a trap, but these hardings are typically hard to be able to falsify, so they decide if they go get it for salvage, they might be able to sell some of the parts and really be able to impress the empire that they work for. Arriving at the ship, dropping out of warp right within firing range, Picard orders open fire on the ship, but for them to be careful because he doesn't want to get too damaged and not be salvageable. As they keep fire open and trying to bring down its shield, we see that the ship is somehow still recovering and it ends up opening fire back at them. With one good phaser beam, they are able to cut a piece of the ship off and Picard orders a kill shot. He doesn't care about the people on the ship, he just wants the technology inside of it. As the shot is successful, we see that the Cardassians flying out of the ship are all dying in the vacuum of space. And one of Picard's men is a little taken by what they just had to do. But Picard quickly says, would he rather do this or be one of them? But the counselor does have a good idea. As all of these Cardassians are slowly flying out into space, why not teleport two of them and then be able to interrogate them? After that, Picard orders that they tractor beam that ship and set a course for Mars, as he's expecting that when they arrive, they are going to welcome them with open arms as they are bringing a Cardassian ship. Arriving at the planet where they plan to barter this Cardassian ship off, we see that Picard is going to take a small crew as they're going to go visit. In this facility, we see that this version of Data, much like in the previous pages in the comics, is still struggling to figure out how everything works, sarcasm, and the likes. He is quick to quote unquote, make a opportunity and try to seize the best for Picard. And while going through the stolen data, they are able to notice that there is a brand new ship that is in fact in development, and they want it for themselves. After that, we get to catch up with a few pages of some dialogue with Geordi LaForge, who of course is going to be helping Picard, and he just so happens to be pointing him in the direction of a brand new ship that is being developed, a galaxy-class ship named the Enterprise. And that is the end of the first issue. From top to bottom, this definitely feels like it could be an episode of the TV show, and it's absolutely awesome. Seeing these characters and how they would be in the Mirror Universe is completely cool and something new to us Star Trek fans. Overall, great storytelling and everything felt like Star Trek. 9 out of 10. Hey guys, Armin here just reminding you that this video was made possible thanks to patrons. If you guys are interested in supporting us and making sure we keep the lights on, check out our Patreon where you can join other fans in supporting the CBC delivering content you guys have come to love and expect. And if you can't do that, give us a like and a subscribe. That goes a long way too.